Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. What's going on, brother? Why are you so smiling? <laughs> Just laughing about the last conversation. I was going to introduce you slightly differently yeah, <laughs> on this one. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Um, so I'm going to bring a question to the table from one of the men in the Facebook community. So. This gentleman has asked if you aren't in love with her anymore, but do still have a lot of love for her. If you decide to stick it out, can you fall in love again? Or do you pretty much just live by agreements and boundaries and tolerate being together for the rest of your lives? Mm. I bet a lot of guys have this question. I bet a lot of men listening to this have a version of this question, right? I love her. I have feelings for her. I'm not in love with her. There's no passion there anymore. I've lost that. I've lost that love and feeling <laughs> as the song goes. Um, so the short answer is yes. We see it happen all the time. And I want to say all the time on a weekly basis uh, within the powerful man movement, as we call it. So um, of the thousands of men that are involved in the movement, one way or tens of thousands, one way or another, but and specifically the men that are just in our private community, we're seeing this happen on a regular basis. So let me set the scene that happens for most guys, right? You've been married, right? You get married, everything's the sky's the limit, right? You're going to be the power couple. Things are amazing for the most part, for most of everybody, right? Bell-shaped curve. And as you're going through your marriage, Things happen. Responsibilities take course. The kids come. Sleepless nights. You guys start to separate because you're taking Johnny to soccer and she's taking Susie to volleyball or whatever's going on. And your guys are like ships passing through the night. And what I mean by that is you get up in the morning, the coffee's brewing, and you're taking care of the kids right away. Dad, where's this? Mom, where's that? You know, and then you're going through your day, you go to work. She's either going to work or taking care of the kids or taking care of the house, whichever. When you come back, let's say you come together at five or six o'clock, typical for most people. And now you're having family dinner and you're talking to the kids. How was your day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then, you know, eight o'clock comes or what have you. And maybe if you have young ones, you're put into bed. If you don't, you're older and you have a little bit of time, but maybe you're tidying up things around the house, you're paying bills, you're doing things that responsible adults do. And then comes time for bed and you're exhausted. You're friggin' tired. Maybe you've had a cocktail or two or whatever, whatever you do to wind down your day, maybe not. And you go to bed and that's just one day, right? Well, one day turns into two, two days turns into a week, a week turns into a month. Maybe you have some intimacy here and there. And that intimacy starts to fade over time where you're having sex every night. And then it's every three nights, then it's every month. And for some of you guys, it's every year. To longer. We have guys in the program that have come to us that haven't had sex in a very long time, years. And this starts to happen, and you still look across at her as she's taking care of your children. And you're saying, she's a good woman. I love her. I want good things for her. But my desires have changed. I've evolved. She's my roommate. She's my, quote, life partner. I'm doing life with her, which is more like a job, right? It's more like a. <laughs> whenever I hear someone say it, my wife has said this to me, like, we're life partners. I'm like, well, that fucking sucks. Like, <laughs> like I, I want passion. I want, I want, you know, intrigue. I want mystery. Yes, we're doing life together, but I want more than just that because it sounds like a job description, you know, like, hey, we're, we're leading this event together as coaches do, right? That's great. And I want more than that. So this starts to happen and you still love for her, but you're yearning for something more. And that's natural. And I think a lot of us as men, we forget that when we got married, we were one man and today we're a different one. And that's the way it should be, by the way, because if you're not growing, you're dying. But what we forget is our wife is also changing. But we miss that connection time and we don't realize what her deep down desires are. So Tim, a question I often ask the guys when this question comes up, and this is just a way that I find out how in their life to their wife they are, is who should, what are the names of your wife's five friends that she talks to the most? Not her five best friends, because that's going to be your friends that you're going to remember from when you got married, but 
the five people she talks to the most right now today. Cool. You got it or you don't. Just be honest with yourself. You don't know? Just go, I don't know. Awesome. Okay. What books is she reading right now? What shows is she into right now that you're not watching? What podcast is she listening to? Where does she want to travel by herself right now? And what does she want to do? If you can't answer these questions, not that you should know all of them, but if you don't know any of them, this is a telltale sign, guys, that the ball has been dropped in the connection portion of the relationship. And this is where we as men can take ownership of our side of the this, this street here. And your wife should know the same questions, by the way, about you. We get to take the same sides, the same token, and we take ownership here of realizing, okay, we've let it lapse. The beautiful thing is you can get it back. Absolutely can get it back. The only time you cannot get the passion and love back in your relationship, in my opinion, is when there's no love in the relationship. When you no longer love her, when there is no love in your heart for her, that is time to move on. That is a hard thing to come back from. You can, but it's very difficult. When there's a seedling of love, you can become in love again. You can fall in love again. I've fallen in, re-fallen re in love with my wife countless times. And it's at different shades, right? Different levels of that game. I'll still be in love with her and fall deep, more deeply in love with her. Or I'll fall a little bit out. Passion will start to wane. Things will happen. And then we'll find a way to reinvigorate that spark. Within the activation method, we teach the guys a series of things that they get to do to in the live like a king system to solidify their relationship. Also, to fall back in love with themselves. Because you need to be in love with yourself in order to be in love with somebody else. And most people forget that. And the men, have, we've fallen out of love with ourselves. We've stopped doing the guys' trips that we want to do. We've stopped doing the self-care that we want to do because we feel it's our responsibility, it's our need. We feel guilt, we feel shame. All of these things come in. And a lot of times with just reintroducing that, which you know, it's part of the live like a king system, reintroducing all of those behaviors and those choices allows a man to find himself more this is where the alpha resets the best thing in the world that I've ever experienced. He gets to be able to find the powerful man inside himself. That allows him to re-fall in love with his wife. It's crazy how it works, right? Because you're like, wait a minute, I didn't do anything with her. Because you don't have to. When you're leading as a wolf, when you're leading as a lighthouse, that's all you need to do. But you need to do it consistently. You need to do it consistently. And this is why the men go into the brotherhood and the inner circle, our higher end one-year programs. After the activation method, they see the roadmap. They see the possibilities. What once was impossible is now possible. And they're like, I want some more of this. I want more. That's where we get guys saying, I'm having the best year of my life, not just in my relationship, but in my business, in my health, with my kids, in all areas. And they double down because why wouldn't you? Yeah, wow. Um, you went awful on that. I loved it. Um, <laughs> I'm passionate about this topic because I want, I believe that all guys listening to this, if they're in love with their partner, deserve the ability to fall back in love. If that's what both partners want. Yeah. They deserve yeah. this. And that's the thing that came to my mind first when I read the questions. Like, well, what do you want? Right. Because it sounds like he has got one foot in and one foot out. He's wrote a few more comments beneath that says, you know, if you can be in love with her again, how do you get there after going through all the heartache and upsets for so long? Do things just self-regulate and the love resurface again or what? Well, the answer to that is no. You've, you've got to put some effort in, like Big was saying a moment ago. Um, if you are going to, um, if you are going back into dating mode with her to reignite the spark, is that enough to make it happen again? Answer the question is no, as Doug was saying a moment ago. So that, yeah, you definitely got to <clears throat> choose and decide on what you actually want. And I don't think it's an either or scenario here. You know? Can you fall in love with in love again, or do you pretty much just live by agreements and boundaries and tolerate being together? You definitely don't tolerate anything. Um, and part of falling in love with her again 
can be those agreements and boundaries because by default, to Doug's point, hey, who are the people she talks to? Where does she want to go away? Are you spending you know time with the guys? You know, something that really brings couples closer together is time apart often, providing obviously you know, if you go away, then <clears throat> you know, things are taken care of at home. So you don't just leave her in a, a whole world of stress and pain, right? But time apart is something that, you know, we've, we've heard it. It's kind of a cliche, right? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. And in some respects, it, it does. I mean, imagine, right, if you were in a relationship, let's say you decided that, you know what? I am committed. I want this relationship. And I am committed to falling in love with her again, Right? What you may choose to do, assuming that you guys are still in a relationship together, what you may choose to do is take complete ownership of your side of the street. I've spoken about this before. The first step of that might be, like Doug was saying, you know, reconnecting, figuring out who she likes, who she likes, who she's talking to, the list of things you mentioned. Second thing might be to inject a bit of mystery into the relationship from your side. Whether that's live as a king system, right? Or whether that's maybe you update your image, you throw out some old clothes, you get some new ones, self-care, maybe you get a new haircut or just get your haircut more regularly. Maybe you start going to a barber to get your beard trim. You don't make a big deal of it either, right? And maybe what you say is, oh, maybe what you do rather is just arrange a date night. You know, we put a training on for the men in the community all about how to plan the perfect date night. Um, to this particular man, he's in the movement. So, um, watch that training. You know, you could choose to just take the lead, plan the date night, inject again some mystery, and um, along with your upgraded self image, if you will, and the curiosity you're taking in her life, right? That right there and then is going to start to breed more attraction in the relationship. You're going to feel better about yourself for one working out, you're doing other things. She's going to start looking at you a little bit differently as well. Maybe it's just peak to curiosity. You inject some lightness back into the relationship. And from there, you may have some conversations around agreements and boundaries. And maybe part of that is, hey, look, once a quarter, I've got to go away with the guys. And here's why. And I think you should be going away with the girls. We'll switch every quarter. First quarter, I do it. Second quarter, you go with the girls. Whatever you want to put in place there, and those agreements and boundaries can almost set the standard of how you guys are going to continue to cultivate the connection and the attraction between one another. And, you know, depending on what boundaries you set and how you show up, that can also be very sexy for the woman too, because it's decisive, it's firm, it's direction, right? So again, yes, you can fall in love with her again. You know, to Doug's point, I've fallen in love with Amelia oh, no, several times, back in love with it in a different way, right? Just to keep it, well, it just ends up being a bit different, ends up being a little bit fresh, right? Because inevitably things can stagnate. It's just human nature, especially in a long-term relationship or a marriage or whatever, they can. Is it necessarily a bad thing? You just get to address it. And look, let's say you're doing all these things and she's just not interested. She's not responding whatsoever. Then maybe you get to have a conversation with her. Hey, do you actually want this? Now, what can we realistically be for each other? And maybe you've committed, but she's out. Maybe she's gone. Which you get to know that, right? So you can move on with that increased SMV. You can take it somewhere else. Maybe take it where it's going to get the attention that it deserves. You know, it's funny is this reminds me, I was watching last night. So I put my son to bed because I've talked about him in many podcasts and um, he gets scared. So he likes it when I stay in the room with him until he falls asleep. So I have a rocking chair in there. It's pretty cool. So I have my iPad out and I decide I'm going to watch little comedy clips. And I was watching this comedy clip. And I'm going to butcher his name. So shout out to Jason for turning me up back onto this comedian, uh, Sebastian Miniscalco. So part butchering his name, I'm sure. But he has this little skit called going to dinner, right? And this the skit goes like this. And of course, I'm, you know, never repeat a co- co- comedian skit, right? But he's talking about how when you're on your first date and you go out to dinner and the bill comes, you take a quick glance at it, but you act like no big deal, right? And he's talking about he's never gone to sushi, he takes his girl out to sushi. 
and he knows what to expect, you know, in a steak dinner, et cetera, but sushi, no idea. Looks at the bill. He's expecting like a hundred, $120 and it's two fifty. He's like, oh, I'm sweating on the inside, but on the outside of calm and cool, right? It's the first date. He's like, fast forward for you guys that are married or in a long-term commitment, that bill comes, you turn it over. You're like, what the heck did you eat? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed whatever you ordered because we're never coming back to this restaurant. Da, 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 da. <laughs> the point where it makes remind me of this conversation is the first date, right? You worked really hard when you're first dating. You're creating the mystery, as you were saying, Tim. You're, you're going out of your way to make things fun, to show your best version of yourself. Fast forward to the marriage. Now you're at sushi dinner and it's 250. You're expecting 100. You're like, ah, this, what is this? You're going off the handle. I will never eat this. What did you do? Because you've come, become so comfortable. Right? That's what that skit reminds me of. You become so comfortable that you change your approach. And with that comfortability comes routine. And with that routine, lacks the mystery, lacks the passion, lacks the spice, right? It's often said variety is the spice exactly. of life. Spice of life. We all know that saying, yet how often are you introducing variety into your marriage? How often are you introducing variety into your life? Probably go to the same coffee shop, same restaurant, visit the same people, do the same thing. When it's date night, guess what? I know we're going to dinner and we're going to a movie, right? Where's the variety or is there a date night? And so this is where most men become deactivated, right? We become deactivated because we become desensitized to ourselves and desensitized to what we truly want and hunger. For most of us in our 20s, we had these, this rapid amb amb ambition towards life, this hunger to go out and get it, get it in work, get it in business, get, it in, get it in relationships and sex and love and all of these things. When we get to our late 30s, 40s, 50s, yeah, it starts to dissipate. We've lost that somewhere along the way. We've lost that passion. And this goes with the marriage too and the relationship. So point being is it all starts with you. It starts with me. It starts with Tim. It starts with us as the men being the leaders, being the lighthouse. We get to create this and go from deactivated to activated, going from deer to wolf. A deer waits around to see what's going to happen. A wolf goes out and hunts its prey. It makes it happen. It becomes decisive in this. So what I'll tell this gentleman here is, first of all, thank you for posting your question. It's going to serve a lot mm -hmm. of people. I'm obviously passionate about this topic. And so I appreciate you going out there. It takes balls to post a question. It really does. Um, and so I honor you for that. And I'll tell you the answer is yes. You can fall back in love. You can do that. Will it take work? Maybe. Most likely, yeah. It doesn't have to. It can take play. But it's going to require you from going deactivated to activated. It's going to require you using the triadic connection. It's going to require you going from deer to wolf, right? Your wife is going to fall back in love with you as well as you falling back in love with her. And you together can keep that fire stoked. So you don't always have to, you know, restart the fire, right? It's so much easier. I have a wood stove here, Tim. I'm from Southern California, right? So it's always 70 degrees or what have you, or 80 degrees. So we don't use fires a lot there. Now I live at the foot base of a mountain, a ski mountain. Uh, so I love to use the fire because it's fun. And guess what? When the fire's going, it's so much easier for me to keep the fire going by putting some more wood in the fire, more fuel to the flame than it is starting it from scratch, right? Letting the fire burn out, die, then restarting the fire takes so much more effort than just simply consistently adding fuel to the fire. So much easier, guys. So much easier. But you got to start it first. It takes a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. But once that's going, it's so enjoyable to sit by the warmth of the glow of that fire, to really absorb it, to have that ambient energy coming out. Everybody gets to enjoy it. And you just stoke the flame. No big deal. But you have to be willing to start the fire. And nobody in my house starts a fire except for me. And it's just like in my marriage, my relationship. I don't rely on anybody else, my wife, including to be the catalyst. I don't require my wife to be the wolf. I don't require my wife to be the lighthouse. I take that responsibility on just like I start the fire. Everybody enjoys it and I get to do it and I get to provide that. And that's what I'm going to recommend you do, my friend, is you stoke the fire in this marriage, right? You start it, you get the flames going. And that's from going from deactivated to activate it.
I love that. Well said. Guys, great questions. Keep those coming in. We do have a thread in the Facebook group. You can search hashtag podcast if you want to find that. And Tim will put that hashtag hopefully again under that comment. We'll let him know that it's been answered. Hashtag podcast in the free Facebook group. Tim and I will do our best job to go through as many of those questions as we can to get those answered. We're always trying to add more value for you guys. And guys, as I always say in the moment of insight, take massive action, guys. This is your life. Your one shot at this game we call life, and I really want it for you. Take massive massive action, and we'll see you next time on The Powerful Man Show.